in hel helping make that change happen. A true statesman and a humanitarian, Donald's death this morning already leaves an indescribable void. Donald Payne had a huge heart and a, keen, and a keen mind. And believe me, I will miss them both. Thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman, Congresswoman Woolsey. Um, now I'd like to yield two minutes to another colleague from New Jersey, Congressman Lance. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for yielding. Uh, the Payne family uh, occupies a fabled position in the history of Newark, New Jersey's largest and greatest city. Uh, the whole family has been involved in public service, and of course, Congressman Payne's public service here uh, is of almost a quarter century duration. Uh, Congressman Payne succeeded Congressman Rudino, the distinguished chairman of the House Judiciary Committee at the time of Watergate, well known in American history. Congressman Rodino succeeded Congressman Hartley, who was the congressman from that part of New Jersey uh, for a generation. He, the author with Senator Taft of the Taft-Hartley Act. And so over the course of the 20th century, in the district that has been represented by Congressman Payne for a quarter century, the provenance of that district is Fred Hartley, a Republican of the Taft-Hartley Act, Peter Rodino, the distinguished chairman of the Judiciary Committee during Watergate, and now, for 24 years, Donald Payne. The character of that district is the character of this nation, and certainly the character of the great city of Newark over the course of the 20th and into the 21st century. Uh, the Payne family not only includes the distinguished congressman, but his brother, Bill Payne, with whom I had the honor of serving in the New Jersey legislature. And his brother, Bill, and I worked together in the creation of the Amistad Commission in New Jersey. Of course, uh, that commission dealing with the work of the great Amistad trial based upon uh, the mutiny in 1839 of a slave ship, so brilliantly defended by John Quincy Adams, whose portrait hangs 10 feet from the entrance to the House of Representatives. And in working with Congressman Payne's brother, Bill Payne, in the New Jersey legislature, I got to know the Payne family. And certainly, through his brother Bill, I got to know the congressman. And what a great honor for me uh, to have served here in the Congress with Don Payne. Uh, Mr. Speaker, finally, several days before Martin Luther King was assassinated in Memphis, he was in Newark. And he was in Newark at the request of leaders there, including Donald Payne and William Payne. And among the most prized possessions of the Payne family are photographs of Martin Luther King taken days before his assassination as the Paines were attempting to bring about justice in the city of Newark. And certainly no member of the House of Representatives was more committed to justice, not only here in this country and within this country in the city of Newark, in the state of New Jersey, but justice across the world so that children in poverty could have a decent quality of health care. And as has been cited, the congressman almost lost his life in that regard. The country is poorer for the loss of Donald Payne, but this country is greater for his public service. His public service uh, on the governing body of the city of Newark, his public service as a county commissioner, we use the term freeholder, in Essex County, New Jersey, his public service to the entire state, and I respectfully suggest to the United States of America. We mourn his loss, but we celebrate his life. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I'll back the balance of my time.
Thank you so much, um, Congressman Lance. Now I'd like to yield to uh, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, who I believe succeeded Donald Payne as chairperson of the Congressional Black Caucus. Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate uh, your organizing uh, this time for us to come to the floor and to speak about our friend Donald Payne. We're all so sad uh, and we're going to miss him. Uh, but we also know that the service that he gave to this country even long before he came to the Congress of the United States and the service that he has given to this country since being a member of Congress is unmatched by any member of Congress. Donald Payne uh, was a true servant who not only served um, his state of New Jersey, uh, but Donald Payne was someone who took care of his district. When I take a look at all of the capacities that he served in, uh, in the state of New Jersey, I am just in awe. County uh, Democratic Chairman, Executive of the Prudential Insurance Company, Vice President of Urban Data Systems, and educator in the New York and Passaic uh, Public School Districts, a former National President of the YMCA, Chairman of the World Refugee and Rehabilitation Committee. It goes on and on and on. And he brought with him to Congress the same attitude, the same commitment to service. And since his service in Congress, of course, he uh, left us uh, as chair of um, the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. Uh, he served as the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus uh, immediately prior to my being elected to the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. And I learned a lot from his service about how to chair uh, the Congressional Black Caucus. Don Payne was known for several things, but certainly known and respected for his commitment to education, closing the achievement gap, making sure that we expand opportunities for the least of these uh, with Pell Grants, making sure uh, that we, he reduced the interest rates on um, some of the loans, the Stanford loans, for example. He was known because he understood that as a public policy maker, he could influence education in this country, and he certainly did that. But I also would like to point to his record of achievement, uh, serving as the chair of the Africa Subcommittee uh, of the Foreign Affairs Committee, where he was the expert unmatched. Uh, as a matter of fact, Donald Payne, uh, traveled to Africa, East Africa, West Africa, uh, throughout his career, and he knew all of these countries uh, on the continent, and he knew the leaders, past and present. As a matter of fact, Don didn't wait for a codel of a lot of people to be organized to go to a troubled spot. Don would get on the airplane uh, by himself, a one-person codel, and travel set up his own meetings with the leaders of those countries, uh, talk with them about uh, what was taking place in those countries, and get such an understanding of uh, what needed to be done. And he coupled all of this with the history of the countries of uh, Africa. Don was a, an educator. He was a teacher. He was a historian. And so he knew a lot about the background of these countries because he had studied that. And so when he coupled that information with what was going on at the present time that he was visiting and working on issues in those countries, he made it all come together and he helped us all to understand. He was our go-to person on Africa for sure. When we wanted to know what was going on, and some people who were not that involved in foreign affairs and in Africa, they just followed his vote. When they looked up on that panel, they looked at how Don Payne was voting, and then they followed his leadership. And so, we're going to miss that leadership. We're going to miss this dedication. We're going to miss this mild-mannered man who loved his job who loved his district. And I'm always going to remember that he invited me to his district uh, 
On several occasions, I went up with Don, I campaigned with him, I went about the community, he introduced me to the ministers, and he was well respected and loved in his district. And of course, we all know why, because he was dedicated to the district, and he did so much for the district. And of course, the district is going to miss Don Payne. It will be hard uh, to match uh, the work that he did and his success and his achievements, and we're going to remember uh, each time we're involved in some of the same issues that Don was involved in, we're going to ask ourselves, what would Don have done? And we're going to follow uh, our th the thinking of Don Payne on those issues. I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you, Congresswoman Waters. I'd, I'd now like to yield two minutes to the gentleman from Texas, uh, Congressman Green. I thank the lady. Mr. Speaker, it is said that a politician will always rise to the occasion. And the Honorable Don Payne did rise to the occasion on many occasions. But it is also said that a statesman makes the occasion. Don Payne was more than a politician. He was a statesman. He made the occasion in Darfur, where he went there to make sure those who were suffering among the very least, among the very last and the lost, such that they would have an opportunity to have a better quality of life. And he was to this day still working to help the people of Darfur. He made the occasion when it came to AIDS, $50 million, $50 million to help those who are beset with this disease. He made the occasion when it came to working with his colleagues, pulling us together, helping us to unite to do things collectively that we could never do apart. He developed a symbiotic relationship among his many relationships. When I think of Donald Payne, I will always remember that he was a person of honor. He honored his word. To his friends, his word meant something. But more importantly, he honored his word to foes. People who disagreed with him, once they had his word, they had a word they could count on. I will remember that he was a person who respected this institution. This institution meant something to the Honorable Don Payne. What this institution stood for and how we could utilize this institution to make a difference in the lives of others was important to him. He was a person of valor. He would stand with you. He was determined. He was a fighter. He came under fire, I'm told, in Africa as he was trying to help others. And finally, I will say this. I truly do believe that God is good all the time, even under circumstances such as these. I believe that God is good because we didn't have to have him for 77 years. We didn't have to have him in this house for 12 terms. I didn't have to have him as a friend for eight years. I believe that God is good all the time, and I am so proud that God allowed him to come this way, and I had the benefit of calling him my friend. Don, we love you, and I know that wherever you are, there is a statesman there who is making the occasion. I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you, Congressman Green. And now I'd like to, now I'd like to yield uh, two minutes to another colleague from New Jersey and friend of Donald Payne, Congressman. Thank you very much. I appreciate you yielding. And let me just uh, join my distinguished colleagues in expressing our deepest condolences to Don Payne's family. Uh, he is truly a remarkable man. I had the privilege of sitting next to him for about 15 years. Uh, as I was the chairman, or he was the chairman of the Human Rights Committee, uh, the Africa Committee as well, I was his ranking, he was my chairman, and we always worked in a very cooperative way, we always had mutual respect, and he had such a deep compassion for the people who have suffered so, so much in, on the subcontinent of Africa. Uh, he was quiet, but always determined, extremely thoughtful, a humanitarian in the extreme, and he fought for so many important issues. You know, it was not a slam dunk or in any way a given that PEPFAR, the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, would become law. Uh, Don was there working in a bipartisan way to ensure uh, that sufficient funding, sufficient authorities were given to the U.S. Agency for International Development to mount a massive effort to combat the pandemic of HIV AIDS. He did the same thing with malaria as chairman 
or co-chairman of the Malaria Caucus, and he did the same thing with tuberculosis, which sadly is an opportunistic disease that, that afflicts so many people who have HIV AIDS. Uh, on the Sudan Peace Act, uh, again, when we were looking and working so hard to try to stop the slaughter in South Sudan, there was Don Payne working every day of the week to ensure uh, that somehow peace would break out and, and the genocide would end uh, there as well as in Darfur. Uh, again, I know that he cared deeply because I was there having those conversations with him day in and day out. You know, very often on my subcommittee on human rights, when I chaired that, and he was the member, uh, ranking member, we would go on for hours. There would be one person in the room, me and I, <laughs> two of us, really, because he cares so deeply about human rights globally as well as in Africa. He will be deeply missed. Uh, again, a great man, a great friend, uh, and his passing is mourned by everyone in this chamber and everybody in the state of New Jersey. So uh, God bless him. God bless his family. And um, thank you, Don Payne, for the great work that you did in the U.S. House of Representatives. I yield back to my friend. Thank you, Congressman Smith. And now I'd like to yield two minutes to the gentleman from Michigan, Congressman Clark. I want to thank the... I want to thank the gentlewoman from the Virgin Islands for yielding time to me. I'm one of the newest members of the Congressional Black Caucus. Being a freshman here in this body, you become immediately aware of the traditions of the House. For example, male members of the House are referred to as the gentlemen from the state that they represent. Donald Payne was a gentleman not because he was elected to Congress, but because he was a good, decent human being. He welcomed me with open arms as a new guy from Detroit that very few in the House even knew about. Less than two weeks ago, Donald Payne returned a call that I had placed to him. And we had a short but gracious conversation and I knew after I hung up the phone that I would see him soon, right here in the halls of Congress. But that never came to pass. The lesson is clear to all of us. Our time, our life here on earth is very fleeting. Let's do everything we can to cherish each moment. Not necessarily to pursue a wild ambition or to do a lot of things, but just to be like Donald Payne, respecting others, caring for others. That's what he stood for. I yield back my time. Thank, thank you, Congressman Clark. And now I'd like to yield uh, two minutes to the gentleman lady from Florida, Congresswoman Eliana ross -Layton. Thank you so much. I, I thank the gentle lady for uh, yielding me uh, this time. And, and just a few hours ago, as we know, we lost a, a dear friend, an esteemed and honored and respected colleague, Congressman uh, Don Payne of New Jersey. Don was uh, a proud member of the New Jersey delegation. He was uh, a faithful servant uh, to his constituents. For more than two decades, he served them in, the, in this body. He was also a committed member of our Foreign Affairs Committee committee and uh, he was uh, chairman and the ranking uh, Democrat on the uh, subcommittee on Africa global health and human rights and uh, in that uh, capacity he showed us uh, his unwavering commitment uh, to fighting diseases worldwide but especially in uh, Africa he uh, shone the light on uh, human rights abuses uh, throughout the world and uh, Don's uh, tireless efforts uh, provided a voice for the afflicted and for the oppressed. We are saddened as an institution, as a body, and as friends by the loss of uh, such a, a courageous and, and uh, loyal and conscientious uh, public servant. Don will be greatly bi missed by our uh, Foreign Affairs Committee because he was such a tireless advocate for the causes that of which he he felt such passion and uh, he will be missed here on the house floor because he was ever present whenever there was a an important issue to be debated he will be missed 
in his home state of, of New Jersey, where he was so revered and respected by the constituents whom he uh, so faithfully uh, served. And he will be uh, missed especially by the thousands and, and indeed countless people whom we will never know who uh, he inspired and he impacted throughout his uh, tenure in, uh, an, uh, and long career in, in public service. So without a doubt, Congressman Don Payne's contributions will be remembered uh, for many years to come. And um, our prayers and our thoughts are with all of the members of the Payne family and all of the people whom he touched in a very special way. I thank the gentlelady for the time, and I yield back. And in our Foreign Affairs Committee tomorrow, we will hold a special remembrance for Congressman Don Payne. I yield back. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman. And, and now I'd like to yield two minutes to the gentleman from American Samoa, Congressman Valio Mevenga. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to extend and revise my remarks. I do want to thank the gentlelady from the Virgin Islands uh, for managing the time for our colleagues and the special order that has been taken to honor our good friend who has just passed away, Congressman Don Payne. Congressman Don Payne was my classmate. We sat next to each other for the past 23 years as members of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, we were talking about the situation where it looked very interesting as proud Americans, and yet we knew something was missing here in terms of the activities of how our foreign policies have come about in doing things in our relationship with other countries. So. Don Payne was committed to looking after the needs of those, of what are our foreign policies towards Africa. My commitment was to find out what are our foreign policies towards the Asia Pacific region. And I want to share this little interesting thought with my colleagues. When Don Payne and I first became members of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, hardly any of the members wanted to be on the Asia Pacific or the Africa subcommittees. The mentality here in Washington was entirely towards Europe and the Middle East. Being members of these two subcommittees was almost like the pits. They were not even in the radar screen. Wasn't even given any real sense of priority or interest. I want to say to my colleagues that it has been a truly an honor to be sitting next to my brother Don Payne and to commit to the idea as a champion and advocate for the needs of the poor as a great champion of the human rights throughout the world, not just towards Africa, but all other regions of the world. Don Payne and I worked on the plight of the needs of the people of West Papua New Guinea. I always have remembered Don Payne's admonition to me when every time we discuss issues about fairness and equality, he said, any, let me just remind you of what Martin Luther King Jr. once said, in the end, we will not remember the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. And I think it's so true in terms of what he instituted in my own heart and mind. You can't just sit back and just let things go by. We've got to be out there being proactive, express ideas that will solve the many issues and the problems that we are faced with, not only in our own country, but throughout the world. I want to express my deepest sympathies and condolences through the family of my brother, Congressman Don Payne. I'm remembered of the book saying, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. This truly was a peacemaker whom I've had the honor and privilege of witnessing his life as an example, not only to our colleagues, but certainly to the members of the American, to the American people, both in deed and by his conduct, Don Payne was truly a statesman, and his voice will be surely missed in the years to come. And Madam, Mr. Speaker, I am so happy to see that so many of our colleagues are here to pay special tribute to this great man, a gentleman, and yet with such great, tremendous example, giving us what we should be doing, going about helping other people well, and I want to wish him well. And we have a saying in my culture, May you have a good voyage. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Fowler Mavenga. 
And now I'd like to yield two minutes to the gentlelady from Illinois, Congresswoman Jan Tchaikovsky. Thank you for this opportunity to speak about a really good friend of mine, Don Payne. When I heard that his situation was grave, I gave a call to his brother, Bill, who I had gotten to know on trips that he and Don took, and had the privilege then of speaking with Don. He was in hospice. This was just a couple of days ago. And I was able to tell him how much I loved him and able to, to tell him that I hoped that he found peace and comfort in the knowledge that he helped so many people in this world. Don Payne was a real citizen of the world, a quiet and dignified gentleman, but he had a fierce commitment to justice and human rights everywhere. He was really the de facto ambassador to Africa. No one in this Congress knew or cared more for the people of, of Africa. He also personally knew the, the, the leaders, and they knew and, and respected him. His knowledge and his relationships will leave a, a big hole here. He was the go-to person if he wanted to know anything about what was going, the political situation, or who was who on the continent. Don Payne was the one to, to go to. As I said, I was able to travel with Don and, and, and Bill to many places uh, around the world and always listen carefully, as everyone did, when Don spoke with the kind of knowledge that he had about all things dealing with foreign relations, with all things dealing with human, human rights. So my heart goes out to my good friend Bill Payne now, to the children and grandchildren, and one great-grandchild of Donald Payne, my beloved friend who I'll miss so much. I yield back. Thank you, Congresswoman Schakowsky. And now I'd like to yield two minutes to another uh, colleague of Don Payne's from New Jersey, Congressman Bill Pesquerel. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the House has uh, lost a real advocate, a person who respected this institution, who understood what it was. So I know I speak for all of us when I say our condolences to the family and our condolences to his constituents. We served most distinctly. Rather than tell you some things I was going to prepare myself and my relationship with Donald, I got a letter this afternoon. And I think it's appropriate if I read this letter on the floor of the House because it tells us Donald Payne was not just interested in Africa. His interests as a humanitarian went beyond that. Sean Fain President Jerry Adams has spoken of the deep sadness of the death of United States Congressman Donald Payne. On behalf of Sean Fain and all of those in Ireland who met Congressman Payne on his many visits here, the Sean Fain leader extended his deepest sympathy to Congressman Payne's children and his family circle and many friends. And this is what Jerry his own words are. Donald Payne was a champion for the disadvantaged and the downtrodden in the United States and around the world. He devoted his life to promoting civil rights, equality, and democracy. My friends, just think who's saying this. A man of valor, very courageous person, Jerry Adams. This is how close we are in the tribe of humanity, and how many times we fail to recognize it. I met Donald Payne many times, both in Washington and in Ireland. He was always very interested in Ireland and visited the North before the cessations in the mid-1990s. Donald was very supportive of the Irish peace process from the beginning and was a regular participant in briefings 
which I and other Sean Fein visitors gave to political leaders on Capitol Hill. Many of us were there, many of us in this room. He was also a frequent member of congressional delegations that visited Ireland. Donald was also be fondly remembered by citizens on Garvany Road in North Belfast and Short Strand, which he visited at a time when efforts were being made to force controversial orange marches through these districts. His experience as a civil rights campaigner resonated with his audience in West Belfast when he spoke there during the West Belfast field on the issue of equality and anti-discrimination legislation. During a debate in Washington on the McBride principles, he remarked that I and other members of the Congressional Black Caucus can easily identify with Catholic minorities. I recognize many similarities in how they are treated with how people here were treated. Donald was a thoughtful, he was a generous, well-informed politician who was personally dedicated to improving conditions for others and who worked diligently on behalf of his constituents and of his party. He will be remembered with gratitude and real affection for his support at difficult and dangerous times in Ireland and difficult and dangerous times all over the world. He will be sadly missed by his constituents, by people the world over, and I want to extend regrets and deepest sympathy to his family and his friends. Go Nadine Fada, Dia Trakor, R. Nanam Dillis. May he rest in peace, and may all of his friends gather in this institution that he loves so well. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Pascal, and thank you for uh, bringing the sympathies of Sein Fen to, to the floor. Um, I'd now like to yield two minutes to a person who served with Don for quite a while on the Foreign Affairs Committee, Chairman Dan Burton of Indiana. I thank the gentlelady for yielding. You know, uh, we judge as congressmen our colleagues based upon their ability and how hard they work. But the thing I liked about Don Payne as a colleague with whom I worked for 24 years on the Foreign Affairs Committee was he was a nice guy. He was really a nice guy. Even when we had our differences, and there were many, when we served on the Africa subcommittee together, we would, we would, we would debate and then we'd walk together down the hall and, and talk as friends and still discuss our differences, but we did it in such a friendly way and I really liked the guy. You know, one of the things I think is so important is we really don't get to know each other too much in this place. We've got 435 of us, and people come who are wealthy, and some who are very poor, some who came from bad beginnings and tough beginnings, and some come from the top. And we don't get to know each other very well. But I know Don Payne because, or I knew Don Payne because he worked so hard for the people he represented in Newark, and he really fought for them. He wanted a a garage in Newark because of the business downtown and I remember I fought him on that garage and we were able to stop it and I think one of the things I'll regret the day I leave this place is that I stopped that garage because I think Don Payne as the kind of guy he was really felt like it was needed for, New uh, for Newark and Don if you're listening I if I had a chance I'd vote differently on that thing but anyhow, he was a nice guy. He was a credit to the Congress of the United States and to everybody who knew him. And uh, I'd like to say to his family, we, or I extend my deepest sympathy, as the other speakers have said, but I'd also like to say that to his staff. I know his staff is going through a difficult time right now as well as his family, so I want to extend my deepest sympathy to them as well. And with that, I thank you for yielding me the time, and I yield back. Thank you, Chairman Burton. Uh, at this time, I'd like to yield two minutes to the, another colleague from New Jersey, Congressman Rob Andrews. Jersey, right? Thank my friend for yielding. Sometimes the quietest voices are the ones that have the greatest impact. 
Donald Payne always spoke quietly, humbly, but as we reflect on his life, the impact is monumental. Tonight, there are villages in Africa where people have self-determination, human dignity, education, health care, because of the impact of his voice and his life. There are people working in the city of Newark, the county of Essex, and Union, and Hudson, because of businesses he helped to bring, and schools he helped to build, and progress he helped to make. There are, as we heard my friend Bill Pasquale talk about, there are people in Ireland from very different heritages and backgrounds that Donald brought here who are celebrating his life because of the reach of his voice and of his life. And I think most importantly, the impact of his voice is the hollowness and sorrow that we all feel here in this institution because the quietness of his voice brought us together at times of discord and stress. Donald believed passionately in his progressive ideology, but he believed with equal passion in tolerance for those who disputed it. Donald fought fiercely for the causes that, in which he and I believed, and he and others believed, but he never fought the rights of others to express differing views. He cared very personally about his causes, but he never took personally those who disagreed with him. This is a lesson that we should learn and abide by in this institution in years to come because it makes us better people and it makes our institution stronger. Later this week, it is a remarkable thing that this humble young man, a school teacher, a leader in the YMCA, who at the beginning of his career lost many more elections than he won, lost two elections for the county executive position, lost multiple attempts to become elected to this House of Representatives, and then triumphed. Someone from those humble beginnings that world leaders will come to a place of worship in the city of Newark to commemorate his life. But I think what's more indicative of Donald's contribution is as those world leaders come through Newark Airport into the city that Donald loved, there will be janitors and school teachers and truck drivers and day daycare providers and laborers and electricians and Americans of all walks of life, people of all walks of life who will know and acknowledge the great impact of this quiet voice. His voice has sadly been stilled, but let us celebrate the fact that his impact will live in our world in our country, in our institution, and in our hearts forever. May God bless his family and comfort them at this time of affliction. Thank you, Congressman Andrews. At this time, I'd like to yield two minutes to the gentleman from Troy, the congressman from Georgia, Congressman John Lewis. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the gentle lady for yielding. I rise today to honor the member of our beloved colleague, the distinguished gentleman from the state of New Jersey, Donna Payne. Today we have lost a wonderful and good friend, and the people of the 10th District of New Jersey have lost a fearless leader and advocate. Any American can be elected to public office but not everyone can serve with dignity and great respect. Donald Payne, my friend, my brother, enjoyed the admiration of his colleagues because he led by example and through quite determined diplomacy, he accomplished a great deal. A deep sensitivity to the human condition were at the center of all he did. His work was an extension of the belief that each of us has a responsibility to serve one another and that we must use the power and resources of a great nation to relieve the burdens of the poor, the oppressed, the hungry, and the sick. That is why this former public school teacher wanted to unlock the power of education to free those who are struggling in the urban centers in America. And that is why he was a tireless advocate 
for the people of Africa because a heartfelt compassion guided all that he did. In a time when the needs of the poor are hardly spoken, when the cries of the locked out and left behind are rarely heard, the chamber would deeply miss a gentle statesman with a heart that was big enough to serve all humankind. The thoughts and prayers of the people of the 5th District of Georgia and many members of this Congress are with his family, staff, and friends now as they move through a difficult time. Just know that Donald Payne's will love and he will be deeply missed, not only by the people of the 10th District of New Jersey, but by people around this nation and all around the world. Thank you. We're um, coming close to the end of our hour. I, I think our colleague will probably yield us some time, but I'd like to close out this pa particular hour with... Um, hmm? uh, not really. Could, I'd, I'd like to ask unanimous consent if we could extend the hour for to allow the members who are on the floor to speak. The chair cannot extend the hour, but understand that the gentleman from Tennessee can continue. The gentleman uh, from Tennessee. My no, let, let me, under, the, under the speaker's announced policy of January 5th, 2011, the gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Rowe, is recognized for 60 minutes as the designee major, of the majority leader. I will, uh, your next speaker, I will yield to your next speaker. The next speaker would be uh, Congressman uh, Emanuel Cleaver, the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Okay. The next. You'd be next. Mr. Speaker. This is not one of the highlights of stepping into the well of the House. This is a moment that does not yield great joy, at least not for what just happened in terms of the death of my friend and my colleague, Donald Payne. There is, however, some joy, and the joy is related to the fact that I had the opportunity to know Donald Payne, and I believe that my life was enriched because of it. During his final days here in Washington, I had a number of conversations with him at Georgetown Hospital where I tried to and was successful at least in a couple of occasions to get him to laugh uh, even as he experienced excruciating pain in his hospital bed. Donald Payne can be observed by all members of the House and from that observation we can extract something that can make this place better. Donald Payne was about as good and decent a human being as has ever walked the halls of this stately house. At a time when many elected officials believe that acidic language, acrimony, and red meat discussions is the order of the day, Donald Payne was firm, soft-spoken, and respectful. No matter what happened, you could count on Donald Payne 
being calm through it, except on one occasion, which I will not talk about on the floor. I will talk about later, but not here. But Donald Payne was a man who was as peaceful in private as he was in committee or even on the floor. He had a passion for the diaspora, and I joked with him that everywhere I've ever gone in the diaspora, people asked about him. Just one week before he died, one week, I met with representative, a representative from uh, Brazil who was inviting members of the Congressional Black Caucus to come to Brazil to meet with their caucus, and they would send members here. Before the meeting ended, as I knew would happen, he asked about Donald Payne. And I don't believe there is a, an elected official or a king or prince or potentate in the diaspora who does not know the name of Donald Payne. And what I hope will happen is one of the members will pick up the mantle and delve into the issues and matters of foreign relations as has Donald Payne. Somebody needs to step up to the plate and do that. My final comment is this. I hate cancer. I hate cancer. I can't think of a human being that I hate, but I hate cancer. And in my hatred of cancer, I have come to the realization that all of us are temporary, that we are not permanent creatures. No matter how strong and healthy we feel we are, we are all temporary. And if we understand our temp temporariness, it might inspire us to be just a little better, a little kinder, a little nicer, a little more receptive to others, because we are temporary, at least in this place. Now, I conclude by saying that life must end, but death is not a cul-de-sac. It leads somewhere. And if Donald Payne is not there, that door must be locked, and the rest of us can give up. He was about as good and decent and loving a human being who's walked these halls, and I'm glad that God gave me the chance to know him. Now I would uh, like to yield time to the uh, minority leader from California, uh, Ms. Pelosi. Thank you, Mr. Rob, for yielding. Uh, I thank you and I thank our colleague, Congresswoman Christensen, for uh, taking this special order today so that we can sing the praises of a great man, our colleague, dear friend, precious person, Donald Payne. Uh, I waited, uh, I, I said I wanted to go after uh, Mr. Cleaver because I didn't know how I was going to even have the strength to come uh, to the floor because this is a personal as well as official uh, loss to many of us here and he is always a source of strength to us putting in perspective the fragility of life and the uh, value that we must place on the contribution of all of our colleagues especially when we are blessed with the life service and leadership of someone like Donald Payne. There are very few people that you can say someone like Donald Payne because he was exceptional uh, and unique. Uh, when, they, when the distinguished Mr. Cleaver and Reverend Cleaver says that we um, have to fill in where uh, and, and take his mantle, that would be almost impossible to do because over a lifetime in public service and a long time in the Congress of the United States, Donald Payne gained standing on issues uh, that uh, it takes years to do, but he did teach us along the way. He gave us guidance on what paths to follow, uh, what clues to, to uh, uh, recognize in, in doing the right thing, whether it was in the continent of Asia, Africa, Latin America, wherever it was, and in our own country. 
Uh, I had the privilege of traveling with Donald Payne uh, when we were going to Darfur, and he didn't want to go to the Sudan. He'd been there many times at Darfur, but he was at that moment bla uh, uh, boycotting the regime in Khartoum because of how they treated their people there. And while we were in Khartoum, he was in, and in Darfur, he was in Ethiopia and, and uh, Somalia and the rest, uh, always working, always working to have policy uh, advice to all of us and caring about what the impact of that policy was on people. What was interesting to us though is on that same trip uh, to Africa, uh, which uh, many of members of the Congressional Black Caucus were on, including our distinguished assistant leader, Mr. Clyburn, when we went to Liberia, uh, it was a boiling hot day, a boiling hot day, and we all went to the AME College there, and at that time, uh, the AME University, and they were honoring Donald Payne for his everything, for what he knew about Africa, for his values and how he, he was concerned about, again, policy as it related to people, the encyclopedic knowledge that he had, the great wisdom that sprang from that knowledge, the plans that he always had to make things better, and the way people just flocked to him uh, because they would learn, they would be inspired, and they would love Donald Payne. But it was boiling hot, and we go there, and they decide that we're all going to dress alike that day, so it even got hotter as we donned our robes, and, uh, and seeing, not only telling them the esteem with which he was held in Congress, that was the least of it, because what we were hearing was what people from around Africa the esteem with which they held him, named a library for him at that university in Ethiopia, in, excuse me, in Liberia. Uh, but, you know, he was a school teacher, and he never forgot uh, how important it was uh, to, for us to uh, put our students first. He called them the bright lights of our nation's future, for investing in their potential, for inspiring them to succeed, igniting the sparks that they had within them uh, to uh, do their very best. He was very proud of Newark and serving there. Remember when he first came here, his work on behalf of his constituents, his neighbors, the middle class, working people, people who were striving to reach up into the middle class, he was always working for them. He was New Jersey's, as has been mentioned, first African American member of Congress. He remained a champion, complete, uh, a committed champion of equality and opportunity for all. Again, he and his accomplishments, both on his, sub -com his committee, where he served with Congressman George Miller, who holds him in the highest esteem, and on his Foreign Affairs Committee, where he ho serves with Congressman Howard Berman, well, to hear the two of them talk uh, today, it's as if they have lost a brother, and we all have. They had a full appreciation of his hard work <laughs> ethic. Again, the knowledge that he brought uh, to his subjects, the concern he had for the American people and love he had for our country. Uh, what did you just think? Last week we had a visit to our office from Bill Gates coming to our office to talk about the issue of global health and he asked if Donald Payne could be in the meeting. We had hoped that would be possible but then had to say that he was not feeling well that day. This was a week ago a week ago, but uh, up until the end, he was in demand, recognized for his, again, standing on issues that related to the alleviation of poverty, the eradication of disease, again, the er alleviation of hunger uh, throughout the world, and uh, what more could be about the Gospel of Matthew than uh, ministering th to the needs of God's creation, which the Bible tells us is an act of worship. To ignore those needs is to dishonor the God who made us. Uh, Donald Payne was all about worshiping God by ministering to the needs. Uh, he was an expert on economic, political, and security situations throughout Africa. And, uh, and uh, I had the honor of uh, uh, nominating him, recognizing his extraordinary work around the world. Uh, I was proud to recommend uh, that President George W. Bush 
named a Donald P Congress a Congressman Payne, the, our congressional representative of the House Democrats at the United Nations. Uh, usually it was just for one term. Uh, on the case of Donald Payne, we went well beyond that in recognition of the extraordinary contribution that he makes. Uh, so, again, whether it was in his own district, whether it was Newark, New Jersey, or across the world, he, he was a powerful and passionate voice. I hope it's a comfort to his children, to Donald Jr., to Wanda, and Nicole, and all who loved Donald Payne, his dear brother, Bill, who traveled with him frequently and loved him so much. I hope it's a comfort to them that so many people who knew him well, loved him so much, mourn their loss, and are praying for them at this sad time. With that, Mr. Speaker, I again thank Mr. Rowe and Congresswoman Christensen uh, for the opportunity to say just a few things uh, about our dear friend who will be s sadly missed and long remembered. His legacy lives on in the Congress of the United States. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would uh, now like to yield time to the distinguished gentleman from Maryland, uh, Mr. Steny Hoyer. I thank the gentleman for yielding. This is a sad day for America. It's a sad day for the Congress. It's a sad day for our African-American brothers and sisters who have lost a real leader and an extraordinary friend. I first met Donald Payne when I was in my mid-twenties. He was active in the Young Democrats in New Jersey. I was active in the Young Democrats in Maryland. And that's how we first met. Uh, Don was uh, about six years older than I am. And uh, so I looked on him as a when you're in your middle 20s, somebody in their 30s is really old. Um, but we all saw him as a very serious individual, serious about his activities, serious about his objectives, uh, serious about uh, the people. Uh, he had an extraordinarily productive career. As the leader has mentioned, and as I know other speakers before me, have mentioned he was a teacher. Uh, he was a teacher in the tradition of Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass, uh, a, a fellow Marylander, said that it is easier to build strong children than it is to repair broken men. And Donald Payne was focused on that concept as a teacher. And then throughout his life, he was focused on making sure that America uh, kept the faith with people around the world, that its values, that its hopes, its visions uh, for uh, ourselves were also our hopes and visions for others. Donald Payne, before he came to the Congress, I think had traveled to more countries than perhaps any member of Congress. Uh, he cared about people, and particularly people uh, who lived in Africa. And I think there was no member who knew Africa better than Donald Payne. No member who risked more for the welfare of those who live uh, in that continent, on that continent. Uh, my first trip as majority leader, Barbara Lee is here, she went with us. My first trip uh, as majority leader, uh, I went to Sudan and to Darfur. Uh, I made that my first trip because uh, at that point in time it was one of the most troubled and still remains uh, lands uh, in our globe. Donald Payne unfortunately could not go on that trip. He was otherwise, uh, he had another thing to do. But we had a briefing before we went and Donald Payne was there. And it was clear from those who briefed us that Donald Payne was obviously the person they looked to for knowledge uh, and uh, insight into uh, how we could get from where we were then uh, to the plebiscite, uh, to what is now the independent South Sudan, 
and hopefully it will remain so, notwithstanding the violence of Sudan itself. Donald Payne was an extraordinarily conscientious member of this body. But more than that, he was a man who cared about his fellow man and fellow women. Donald Payne was a serious member of this body. Uh, that does not mean he was always serious. He had a sense of humor. He was a wonderful, engaging uh, person. Uh, but he was serious about what he did. Uh, and it reflected how deeply he cared about those whom he served and about his country. We could all speak for special order after special order and special order and still not uh, reach the magnitude of praise and thanks that he deserves. Suffice it to say that this body was a better place for his service. And as Reverend Cleaver, Cleaver so eloquently intoned, uh, we were better people for having been his friend and his colleague and his co-worker. And I am pleased to join all of you who, like me, knew Donald Payne as a member of Congress, yes, but as a human being, as an individual, as someone who cared about us and we cared about him. Uh, I join uh, Leader Pelosi and all of you mm -hmm. and our friends on the other side of the aisle because Don worked across the aisle. Uh, Don was not an observer uh, of partisan differences, although he understood they existed. His objective was to work with all for the betterment of all. So I'm pleased to have this opportunity to join all of you in thanking God uh, that he gave us Don Payne, that he gave him sufficient years to make an extraordinary mark here in this country and around the world. And I yield back the balance of my time.